I used to think if I know how to code, then I can crack a coding interview. But boy, I was wrong. Do you know how frustrating it is grinding lead code endlessly to prep for your coding interview? I feel you. I was in the same shoe two years ago when I was prepping for my Google coding interview. I spent 288 hours practicing lead code, which is equivalent to 10 days without sleeping. And once I learned these five strategies, I realized that you don't need to spend so many hours grinding lead code and you can get the same results and crack the Google interview. Here's how. In case you don't know me, my name is Gabrielle and I'm a software engineer at Google. How to crack the Google interview and land a job as a software engineer. Your sister has joined Google and now it's your turn. I would like to share five insights that I learned along the way that can help you to accelerate your progress and see results faster. Welcome to Google. The first insight is on coding interview prep strategy. If there is one takeaway from this video, it is the following. Identify the patterns in lead code questions. In case you haven't heard of lead code, it is the coding interview prep platform. In particular, be crystal clear about the relationship between the problem's goal, data structure of the input, the algorithm that can solve the problem, the optimization technique, and finally, the rationale of that optimization technique. Tip, create a notion table like this one I made. The columns are problem goal, data structure, algorithm, optimization, detail, rationale, and link to questions that fall under this category. I like notion because you can create color-coded tags so you can see the patterns between data structure, algorithm, and optimization easily. For the optimization column, write down the brute force algorithm and then an arrow, meaning this brute force can be optimized to the more efficient algorithm. For example, for this question with the goal of finding subarray sum that equals to target k, we can use the brute force of checking the sum of all possible subarrays by nested loop, which is O n cube, and optimize it to one pass, but we save the prefix sum, which is O n. Why do I stress so much about remembering how can we optimize an algorithm? It's because in the Google interview, it really requires you to optimize your solution bit by bit. Being able to know what are some strategies to optimize can make you think faster. The second insight is to identify templates of algorithms so that you just need to tweak it instead of inventing a new algorithm on the spot under time pressure, which would make you a genius. Tip, create a word doc that maps from data structure to algorithms. Similar to the notion table that I mentioned, but this word doc is more detailed. Write a few bullet points of how the algorithm works, the efficiency in big O notation, then copy and paste a template of the algorithm's code. You can get templates from two places, from lead code in the solution or discussion section, or geeks for geeks. Why do I suggest learning templates? Because it makes you incredibly fast to solve coding interview problems. For example, you'll immediately think of sliding window and the deck template when you see a substring coding question. Another tip, use generic function names and variable names in your template so that you distill the gist of how the algorithm works. For example, this backtracking algorithm template has three steps, place, explore, remove. It is super readable. And then you can further tailor and define those functions in your specific lead code or coding problem. The third strategy is track and reflect. Tip. Track your performance on each lead code question that you attempted with a simple Google Sheet like this one I made. The key fields are topic, difficulty, time taken, date that you redo or review it, successfully solved or not, and reflection. It is important to redo questions that you didn't get right the first time to make sure that you don't repeat the same mistakes. This is what I did for questions that I deem valuable. As a word of encouragement, you're not the only one struggling with lead code and we need to stay positive no matter how burnt out we are with lead coding. I took almost two hours for some questions which would make me fail the coding interview that is only 45 minutes long. And that's why I shared the previous strategy about learning templates because it can drastically speed up the process of coming up with a solution as well as coding the solution. The second insight is how to lead code like a pro. Lead code is an essential part of coding interview prep but it's also potentially a rabbit hole that you can spend loads of time with little results. And so I wanted to share a few tips to keep your efforts focused and to maximize your learnings. First, please get LeetCode Premium subscription. This video is not sponsored by LeetCode, by the way, although I hope so. So the premium features make you more efficient and I would say it is worth it. You earn so much more than the annual fee once you land the job. Some LeetCode premium features that I really value are you can select questions by company, sort questions by prevalence, etc. The second tip is to sort by topic companies followed by prevalence in this order. For each data structure that I want to practice, I click on the topic tag to see the list of questions. 
and I prioritized the Google ones that appeared most frequently in the past few months, since it may be a trend. How to strike a balance between covering more topics versus going in depth in each topic, the trade-off between data structure topics breadth and the depth. I try to know all topics, but if I don't know how to do a second legal question in the same topic, then I know it's time to study that topic in depth. How to study? I suggest watching a YouTube video by Abdul Bari, who explains CS concepts really clearly on a whiteboard. For example, I watched some of his sorting algorithm videos, but it's a slippery slope of binging a lot of random YouTube videos. If you go on YouTube, be careful of that. Another way to study is to skim a chapter in a CLRS book that show on screen, although I find it sometimes a bit too theoretical for my need. The last tip for lead code like a pro is to use lead code list or study plan. For example, this blind 75 list is a good selection of 75 classic questions covering a variety of topics. The third insight is to keep a schedule. How to squeeze time out of your day if you work or study full time to prep for coding interviews. It is tough, I have to admit. I try to do a bit of prep before I go to work and I spend most of my after work free time on weekdays and pretty much the whole weekend prepping. What are the benefits of tracking every minute on a schedule? Keeping a record of how you spend your time keeps yourself accountable. Moreover, you can sum up the number of hours you poured into interview prep, broken down by categories such as lead code, practice test, study, and behavior role interview. I spent a total of 377 hours, which is equivalent to 15 full days. The so fourth insight is to do mock interviews. There are three ways to do so. First is use Pramp. Pramp is a platform to schedule mock interviews with random people. It works by pairing two people who want to do mock interviews at a specific time, and you have half an hour to be the interviewer, and then you swap roles with a new question. So both of you you get the chance to be the interviewee. The upside is it is free and you can get a feel of coding interview where you need to explain your thought process to the interviewer. The downside is the question and solutions on PREMP are not as comprehensive as lead code and the peers you get paired with may not have incentive to be a good interviewer. The second way is to participate in lead code contests. In case you don't know what lead code contests are, they are competitions on lead code where they have around four newly released questions of increasing levels of difficulty. You have some time limit, I think it's one and a half hour, and afterwards you get to see the ranking of everyone who participated, their solutions, and learn from them. It is good for trying to solve problems under time pressure if you struggle with time management. However, I think the downside is you have no control over the curation of the legal problems. You might want to practice certain topics first. Participating in the legal contest would not move you closer to that goal. The third way is to ask your friends for mock interviews, which is what I did. I was really lucky that I had a helpful friend who is a good software engineer who offered me coding interviews. If you are watching this video, thank you my friend, I'm very grateful for your time. I recommend just choosing a lead code question on your to-do list, let your friend have some time to look at that lead code question and the solution, then in the mock interview, ask your friend to paste the problem statement to a Google Doc and you type your answer there. The previous four insights are on coding interview prep. So the fifth insight moves on to be about how to ace the Googliness and leadership interview. So first of all, what is Googliness. Googliness is a myriad of qualities and characteristics that Google seeks in its potential employees. Googliness is not officially defined, but for my prep, I used the following 12 criteria that I found and I'll show them on the screen. For leadership, know that Google's leadership assessment criteria inside out, which I'll show on screen. To prep for both of these qualities, create a Google Doc, find some behavior role and hypothetical questions online, then write down examples of what you did or would do in different situations that align with those criteria to answer the questions. Tip, I color coded each of the criteria, then in my answers, I highlight the keywords that demonstrate the criteria in their respective colors. This way, those criteria get ingrained in me and I know how to act in any new situation that align with the Googliness and leadership criteria. Another tip is to watch YouTube videos by Jeff H. Seip, who is a former Google recruiter. He gives some good sample answers in his videos. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you have any questions or suggestions for the next video, please feel free to leave a comment. If you're currently recruiting, I wish you the best of luck. And remember that the best is yet to come. And I hope to see you at Google soon as coworkers. See you soon in the next video. Bye.